All right. Good evening, everyone. Welcome. Good evening. Hi. We'll have to get some tea and coffee for uh, mm -hmm. next times if uh, people want. Okay. So the 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 series is on kashrus in general, and we'll see. We'll be a little bit guided by people's interest, but it will hopefully we'll be able to learn together both some of the uh, fundamental basic ideas and original sources in terms of kashrus. And we'll be starting with Basar Bechal milk and meat. But, um, uh, but um, we also hope to have a focus on you know, practical applications and everyone should come with their questions. Okay, now we're going to see that this first year is a little bit of an introduction because we're just beginning. So it'll be a little bit less focused on sort of uh, practical applications. But uh, even in this year, I think, um, I think uh, we'll get to the practical a little bit. Okay, so we're going to start with Basar Bechal, which is what most people associate with Kashras, because in terms of our um, uh, lives, that's what we have to be most concerned with, meaning because uh, we, we ourselves, we're not shechting and salting anymore. And in terms of really not kosher, I don't know, you know, we buy whatever is a heksher and like that's fine, like, you know, that sort of like solves the problem, generally speaking. But uh, milk and meat, you know, still uh, problems can arise in our kitchen and so forth, and we have to know what the lechas are. Okay, so let's begin with Basar Chalav. So we'll begin with the psukim. As is well known, the prohibition of Basar Bechalv appears how many times in the Torah? Three. Excellent. Okay, so we only have one before us. We'll read this one. It says, the Torah says, and then uh, in Parsh Mishpatim, Shalosh Pamim Bashana, so there'll be three times a year, the three Rogalim. Yera'e kol zechorcha el pnei hadon Hashem, every male is obligated to appear before Hashem, meaning in the Beis HaMikdash. The previous Pesukim are also talking about the Yom Tovim. That is significant. This is sort of the uh, conclusion. Lo tizbach al chametz dam zivchi. Alota say you cannot shecht your carbon with chametz. Presumably this is talking about, let's say on Pesach. Won't be focusing on that. Vlo yalin chilev chagi ad boker. And similarly, you may not leave over the fat of the carbon until the morning. The carbon has to be eaten um, uh, in its proper time. And then finally, you should also bring a positive mitzvah, the first fruits, the Bikurim, to the house of Hashem. And finally, do not cook a kid in its mother's milk. Okay, questions? I don't have a question. Well, yeah. the obvious thing is what, I mean, Maybe it only applies to a kid. Okay. Maybe it's only in its mother. Is there a problem here? Is there a problem it's here? It's non sequitur. Right? Exactly. Yeah. What is this doing here? Right. Right? Oh, yeah, that's true. right? I mean, just the whole context, meaning, again, the, the previous context we encouraged to talk about the Yom Tovim, and then everything else is, has something to do with the Yom Tovim. Okay, maybe specific Yom Tovim, but generally Yom Tovim. Mm -hmm. And then it concludes out of nowhere don't cook a kid in its mother's milk. Exactly. Well, it's not completely foreign. Yeah, right? why? Because you're talking about sacrifices, right. and a lot of them are eaten. And, you know, so there's food involved and... Okay. You know, and the shalosh for galim. Okay. Food. You're already starting to think of something. Okay. Fine. So it could be that this warning comes because while you're, you know, eating the sacrifices, you should know you shouldn't uh, do this. Okay. Fine. Fair enough. It's cooking in the mother's milk, so if it's the sacrifice, it's not the cooking is done at the base of meat. Stay away. Right, but presumably, we're assuming that this prohibition is is for anywhere, right? That's what we're assuming. I get, you're right, it's not explicit in the Pesukim. Yes? Well, because it's talking about, like, holidays and sacrifices and delicacies. And didn't, like, the other people, other, like, other people that weren't Jewish, like, to them it was a big delicacy. And for their holidays, it was, like, a big... big okay, we'll see someone who says something similar to that. Okay, okay I don't want to give it fully away. Okay, so that's one problem with the psukha, meaning just like what, wh why is this here? And, um, okay, that's a problem. Questions, uh, we'll see, the Torah Shabal Pad, Masorah always was, that this Pasuk is not limited to the specific example of kid and his mother's milk, nor is it limited to cooking, okay? We'll see, there were debates, so how far to expand it. I mean, everyone seemed to agree that the Pasuk wasn't meant to be taken literally, and only in this case. But then we'll see there, there are different opinions about how far to take it, how broadly to, uh, to, take, this, to take this example. And finally, 
Um, a question is that the Mephorshim deal with, and there are different suggestions, we don't really know the final answer, is just the reason for the Isser. I mean, why is Basar Vachalav Asr in the first place? And it might have to do with how we'll answer what, why is it in this place, why is this the context of it? Yeah. Why did the Hachamim feel the need to expand the uh, application of that beyond the So I think we assume that that was always just the Masorah. That was, you know, uh, you know, there was always the Masorah that this wasn't Hashem told Moshe. That's the simplest answer. That's the simplest answer. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to begin with the question of the reason Okay, this is going to be a little bit non-halachic, and generally Shirm will be focused more on the halacha, but tonight there's a little bit um, of a non-halachic material. And this will also address a little bit the reason why it's placed here in the Torah. Can I just say... Yes, uh, yes. About the Misura, I mean, when you look to Avram Avinu, right? Right, very good. There's, I mean, maybe there's there, a Kabbalistic <laughs> reason he did that. You're right. But, I mean, if you go back that far, there, it seemed there was... They did. They, you're absolutely right. So I'll be honest with you. I don't know. I'll try to, I'll try to see what the Forshim is saying. Those Sukkim, right? Uh, Philippe is uh, referencing that Avram feeds the... the uh, yeah, exactly. The angels. They did it before the meat. Yeah, but if there was a... Okay, okay. Uh, there's a, I, I know there is a lot of literature on that. We'll have to... I, again, right. I still don't have it at my fingertips. I yeah, yeah. No, we'll... Blean at it. We'll come back to it, or, or me and you will discuss it uh, privately. Okay, so the first thing we're going to read is from the Ramban. So let's skip, not just to start from the very, very beginning, um, the second line, four words in O. So this Ramban happens to be in Dvarim, um, uh, the book of Dvarim, where the prohibition is repeated. And there the Pasuk says, you should not eat meat and milk, ki am kadosh kecha, for you are a holy people. So he's also trying to explain what exactly is that connection. So the Ramban writes as follows. O liyosenu kadoshim, that the Torah wants us to be holy, in what way? Shalo niya am achzari, that we should not be a cruel people, lo yerachamu, that have no mercy, shenachlov es haim venotzi mimena hachalav, that we should, you know, uh, milk the mother, shenavashal bo haben, and then to cook the kid in that actual milk. That's why it's prohibited. It's an act of cruelty. What's the problem with that? Okay, fine. Okay, let's see. Now, he himself is, there's a problem with that, though. Even though the Torah Shabbal Peh is that this prohibition applies to all milk and meat, so it's not only limited to when it's literally the kid in the mother's milk. So he says, still, Okay, when it's, uh, the milk comes from some mother, and, uh, you know, Every calf is someone's someone's baby, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, v'hu derech abishol v'vinei b'kula machzarios. Somehow, you know, um, whenever you are cooking in milk, you're sort of thinking about a mother, and whatever meat you're cooking, it's it's you know, again, some animal, and that itself is cruel. Now, I think this is a, is a little hard to understand, but I think it's it's easier to understand, you know, when you see where the milk and meat are coming from. You know, our problem is that nowadays. We buy everything in the store, so like we don't associate even like milk with cows. We, you right, know, yeah. milk comes from <laughs> from a carton. Exactly, exactly. But um, uh, <laughs> the point is, if let's say you're getting your milk from your backyard, from the, uh, so bossy, bossy the exactly, so you're getting it from some cow. So you just milk that cow, and then you're then you're cooking, you know, a child in it, even though it's not its child. That still sort of uh, should rub you the wrong way if you have a sense of neshama. That's what the Ramban is saying. It's perverted. Like this, so this, this so you, 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 you like, I'm saying you like this answer. Well, yeah. It makes sense to you. We should all be vegetarians. Well, I don't know. It doesn't say, it doesn't say quite that. But yeah, it should be sensitive. The purpose of milk is to nourish young, young beings. So You're right. Okay. It's to keep them alive and nourish them, not to kill them. Okay. Excellent. Fine. Okay. So that is the Ramban's. Ramban's approach, yes, William. Okay, so uh, slightly, this is slightly different, but in a somewhat similar vein. So, fine, for this reason, because of the tremendous sense of irony for no other reason, if we could put it that way, we can't cook a, uh, we have to separate pasar v'chalab. So why are we allowed to cook chicken in eggs? <laughs> 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 uh, 
Okay, I hear, I hear. I mean, this is a little, I mean, you're, in terms of the details, all these answers are not going to answer every detail. In general, that's true. The reasons for mitzvahs don't explain every detail. But, I mean, I'm not sure. In this case, you could say the milk is worse because the milk, things with linens, the milk is like to nourish and to like, you know, right. uh, is the way the mother shows its love. It's not exactly as bad, but okay. Okay, good point, though. Fine, let's continue. The Rashbam writes a similar but different reason. He writes as follows. Uganai hu adavar, it, it's, uh, I don't know, who wants to translate that? It's, uh, it's degrading, yeah, I guess, to, to eat basta b'chalav. Ublia v'rav sanus, rav tanut, it's gluttonous. Okay? Lechol chalav ha'im im habanim, to eat, again, this kind of mixture. So it's going to be similar to the Rambam, but it's a little different. It's focused not so much on that it's cruel, but that, like, you can't control yourself. And, like, you're even willing to do this, you know, to, uh, you know, to have the most delicious food. And it's similar to the prohibitions of shechting a mother and child in the same day, or to taking the eggs in the presence of the mother. Ulamdecha derech tarbut tziva kasev. It's to teach you to be civilized, right? That's what literally, uh, right? Okay, so let's just pause here for a second. So, again, it's similar to the Ramban in the sense that they think it, it uh, is associated, associated with some imperfection or something incorrect in a person's midos. The Ramban is more focused on being cruel to... Uh, the animals, whereas according to the Rashbam, it's again uh, that you're like gluttonous, okay? But obviously they're related because the reason why that's considered so gluttonous is that like you're even willing to kill a mother and child or m milk the mother and kill the child for your own appetite, okay? But it's similar. Can, yes? When they say the, um, the reason, what do they mean? It means we should learn this from the prohibition. It yes. It doesn't mean that's the reason we've got to do it. Correct. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, this is, the, this is one, this is one uh, lesson you should take from it. Correct. Correct. That's a very good point. It's a hook, I mean, fundamentally, because uh, all of kosher is really a hook. To some degree, yeah. To some degree, we're right. That's why we're going to see there are different suggestions, and there's some truth in all of them, and, but you're right. The end of the and, and for sure, again, this we're saying in terms of the details, you know, God willing, a few months from now, and we're talking about, like, well, the spoon was used 18 hours ago, and then it went to this pot, and then that fell on the potatoes. You're not going to be able to say and say, wait a second, you know, uh, you know, um, uh, you know, to me, it doesn't seem gluttonous to uh, be able to serve those potatoes with meat. Like, what, like, so, right, so obviously these are sort of like general ideas that you can derive from the basic mitzvah, but certainly when you get down to the details, it's, right, it's not going to be able to guide you. Meaning when, when we're really learning the halacha, we're really not going to, we shouldn't really have this in our minds. I mean, it's not going to be guiding principles for the halacha. Okay. Let's continue in the Rashbam. Then he has an, another interesting idea. Ulafi sheberegel hayu ochlin behemos harbe his year beparshas haragalim shlo levashel v'lo lachol gedi b'chalivimo v'huadin lachol basar b'chalav k'mo shapir shirabo seinu. Why is it here? Because it was around the Yom Tovim when people would. That's when they would have meat and these big feasts, not in the regalim, so wouldn't it be so common to. Uh, you know, to, ha to have a big feast and to have, uh, let's say, a gadi meat. So that's why the Torah put it, this, is, this section is like the halachos, common halachic shailas on Yom Tiv, in the days of Tanakh. So you'd have to know when can you eat the carbon, you'd have to know you should bring the first fruits, and also this is when it practically made sense to have these halachos. But fundamentally, it's not connected to the Yom Tovim. Okay. Good, any questions? All right, let's continue. And finally, this is what the Rambam writes in the Mord of Uchim. He writes as follows. V'amnam iser basar b'chalav, im hayoso mazon av me'od b'lo safek, u'molid miloi rav. He says, basar b'chalav, this is what he says, he was a doctor. Even though, or it, it for sure is, mazon av, I don't know, uh, 
a very heavy food, okay? And for sure, I'm not even sure, it's bad for your health. I'm not sure exactly what those words exactly mean, but, you know, it, would, it, will, it, would, it, would, it wouldn't be good for your digestive system. That's for sure. And he's sort of implicitly saying maybe that alone is enough reason that the Torah would make it forbidden. Okay, again, I'm not sure if doctors would say that nowadays, but that's what he says. However, the Rambam says, Ein rachok etzli, literally, it's not distant from me, meaning I have a hunch, sheyesh bo reach avodazara, that there's some remnant of avodazara here, and why the Torah is making this forbidden. And he says, I don't know, but ulai, perhaps, kachayu osin ba'avoda me'avoda seha, that perhaps this is they had some service like this, and perhaps they had some practice to do this on their holidays, right? This, yeah. Okay. And I think I, I can't remember where I read this that someone was saying like the symbolism is that like milk represents life, and meat, meaning from a killed animal represents like death, and I don't know, they'd be, you know, doing some sort of uh, ceremony of, you know, the forces of life and death in the world, and I don't know, you can imagine there being some sort of pagan, you know, uh, service with this. Question? No, okay. So that's what the Rambam suggests. And what strengthens this for me, I mean, why I think that I, I, I feel good about this, Zachar Torah also shnei pamim, two times that the Torah mentions the prohibition. Techila mashit sivsa alav im mitzos hachag shalosh pamim yerakol zechorcha. And in the first time it says it in the context of the regalim. And then it says, but don't cook meat and milk. Ki ilu amar, it's as if the Torah is saying, be'es chagechem uboachem lifanai, when you celebrate the Yom Tovim, and come before me, lo tivashel, masha tivashel sham al derech ploni, kamoshay osin. Don't come and cook and do some meat milk ceremony like so and so do, meaning like the Avodazars at that time did. And it would have, and if the Ram is correct, I mean they would know that. I meaning it was common in that day to have these kind of Avodazar ceremonies. And the Torah was making forbidden that kind of Avodah Zarah <laughs> ceremony. Now, obviously, the Torah Shabal Peh was even not when you're doing it in a religious way, right? You can't cook any meat and milk to eat. But it's because that whole thing was associated with these Avodah Zarah ceremonies. So it's saying you should have nothing to do with it, you know, don't eat it, don't have anything to do with it. But in particular, on the holidays, when they would have a Yitzhar back then to, like, do something the way that they would see the other te temples doing, in particular, in that context, the Torah says, don't do that. And to me, that's the best reason that I think. Even though I did not see this basically in any of the ancient pagan works that I've read, right? The Ramam read the history books of his day about what people used to do, meaning in ancient civilization. And he used that to explain certain psukim in the Torah. And sometimes he says that... Um, uh, you know, uh, the Torah says this because the Avodah Zarah at the time did something like this, like it says in this book, and that's what the Torah says. So in this case, he's actually saying, even though, you know, this is just my guess. I have not found in, you know, uh, the history books that they did this, but, but to me it makes sense. Okay. Let, let's just read for a second. And, and so that would be a different reason. It's not, a, it's not because of bad midos, like the Rambana Rashbam would say. It's an anti-Avodah Zarah mitzvah. But also, obviously, you would explain, again, like he said explicitly, the context of why it's written by Yom Tovim. Again, as opposed to the Rosh Bam, who says it's just because that was a common when people would be eating a lot of meat and having feasts. Yes, Philippe. Uh, did, he, uh, did he, like, uh, a kid? Yeah, a kid, yeah. Does that relate to a specific animal? No, no, we're going to get to that just in just and, a second. And it could be any animal in any, any milk. Right? Let's see. Yeah, but let's see. That's exactly what we're going to talk about. Okay, unless there's a question, there's a reason we're going to get to the basic issues of how to read the Pasuk. Good? Okay. So, different weeks we'll be using a different basic text. I mean, some weeks we'll learn a very important Gemara together. Some weeks, like this week, we'll have a nice chunk from a Rambam. Sometimes we'll be reading something from the Shulchan Aruch. It'll just what I think is the best text that would capture the most about a certain topic. Okay. So here before you, you have um, a big chunk from, from the Rambam. And we'll read it slowly together. 
and I'll sort of explain where the Rabbim is coming from. This is a basic, you know, outline of, um, uh, you know, the fundamental issues in terms of uh, the halach of how to read the Pasuk. Okay, so let's begin. Basar b'chalav, asar levashlo, v'asar la'ochlo min ha-Torah, v'asar behana. So, milk and meat, it is forbidden to cook it. That's explicit in the Pasuk. It's forbidden to eat it from the Torah. And similarly, it is forbidden to derive any benefit from Basar v'chalav. So what? So let's say Basar v'chalav is, is produced. So what do you do with it? So v'koverno, so bury it, meaning you would throw it out. You shouldn't leave it around, because then someone might eat it, not knowing it's Basar v'chalav, so you get rid of it. V'afro asr, ka'afar kolanik barn. And even if you would burn it, it would, uh, the ashes would still be forbidden to use in some other way, which is this, the halacha for the ashes of all items that are forbidden behana to derive benefit from it, who's who are nikbar, meaning of, of those who are to be buried and not to be burned. I mean, if there's some isri hana, you're specifically obligated to burn. And when you're obligated to burn it, then the ashes are permitted. Okay, we're going to leave that uh, as an aside. Okay. Now, again, the Pasuk literally only says don't cook. So the, the Masora was, though, that uh, it doesn't mean only not to cook. It means also not to eat and not to derive any benefit from it. And there are different... There were different suggestions in the Gemara. How can we find allusions to that in the, in the Torah? So the most well-known one is what Rashi quotes from the fact that the Torah wrote the Pasuk three times that alludes to these three prohibitions. Don't cook, um, uh, don't eat, and don't derive benefit. But there are other suggestions. So oh. are you saying that Asar Hanal was from the Torah? It's, it, it's, it's not, it's yes. Because the way he yeah. words it, it doesn't seem You're, the same as. It's a very good point, and I, maybe I'll have a good, it, it, that is, it is true. I, I understand what's bothering you, because, you know, what, mm. but I, I hopefully will have a good answer for why that would be like that. But either way, it is from the Torah. So now, what are examples of just to how you would derive benefit from it? So you couldn't, let's say, feed it to your animal, which is a very common question, because many dog foods have meat and milk in it. We'll, we'll come to that um, uh, um, even tonight. Um, you know, um, uh, you couldn't sell it, right, to get and, and get money from it. Um, extra on dog food. You do a little bit. I mean, I don't know if there are, but you you do need to know what kind of dog food you're allowed to buy. Does it apply non-kosher meat, though? It does not apply non-kosher meat. We're going to have to get to there in a second. Well, we're gonna, you're, you're right, you're, it, 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 but we're going to get to all that. We're going to get to all that. That's one of the things we're going to talk about tonight, actually. Okay, and, and I can imagine other things. I mean, if, let's say, you mix milk and and like um, fats of an animal to make some sort of like, um, I don't know, something to burn or to anoint yourself. In theory, that would be forbidden as well. Okay. What, what, if, it, what if some sort of medicine is made out of milk and meat? So if it's still edible, then uh, unless there's a sakana, you wouldn't be able to eat it. Now, obviously, like once, when things are processed, you know, then that's like different. Cause then, but if in theory, it's really just, you know, edible milk and meat, yeah, that would be a problem. Okay. Let's skip to the second paragraph of the Rambam. The Rambam writes this. It's very interesting. Lo shasak hakasav miles or ha'achila. The reason why the Torah literally was quiet from the prohibition of eating. I mean, it doesn't spell as forbidden eating. El ibnesha asar habishel. It's only because it even made cooking forbidden. Klomar meaning to say, v'afilu bishulo asar. You should read the passage as follows. Milk and meat is so bad, that's like so tame, that's so against the Torah's principles, that it's even forbidden just to cook it. And all the more so, certainly you can't eat it. Meaning what? Most maichalos sasuros, you just can't eat. But if you want to cook it, fine. If you want to, for some reason, cook a nevela, or cook a trefa, or, um, uh, or cook a pig, for some reason you want to do that, that's fine. You're allowed to, you know, be involved with those things in that way. But milk and meat is so bad, you're not even allowed to cook it. That's the way you should read the Pasuk. Now, again, obviously, it's based off of the Torah Shabbat Peh, but that's the way you should read the Pasuk. Kamo sheshasak milesor habas me'achashasar basabas. Similar to the way the Torah in the Parsha of Arayos forbidden relationships. It's interesting. There is no Pasuk that says a man... You know, may not marry, have relations with his daughter. Now, obviously, that's forbidden. How do you know it's forbidden? Because the Torah says even your granddaughter is forbidden. Right? So, 
when the Torah says your granddaughter is forbidden, it doesn't mean your granddaughter, but not your daughter. The Torah, you're supposed to read that puzzle, guys. Even your granddaughter is forbidden. Even, even though the relationship is further away. And obviously implicit is your daughter is forbidden. So you should read, you should read Los of Ashel in the same way. It's even forbidden to cook. It's even forbidden to cook. Now, why is this very important? It's, according to the Rambam, this is not just an issue of, of you know, Parsha and how to read the Pasi. It's very important for the following reason. The Rambam has an interesting opinion regarding the 613 mitzvahs. So we know there's Torah Shabbat Sav and Torah Shabbat Pah. There's a written law and the oral law. And things in the oral law can be considered min ha-Torah, whether it's something not, you know, something which is totally a tradition, or whether it's a tradition that's explaining a Pasuk, but, it, it, but that can be a Torah law. And generally speaking, it would be considered a Torah law. However, the Ram's opinion was that to be considered one of the 613 mitzvos, it has to be explicit in the Pasuk. And if, you're, if something is not explicit in the Pasuk, even though we consider it derisa, a Torah law, but it can't be considered one of the 600, it's not one of the 613 mitzvos. Okay? Even though it's derived by the rules that Hashem gave Moshe of how the Chumar is supposed to interpret, and something derived in that way is derisa, and therefore when there's a doubt, you have to be strict, and all, all the derisa laws apply to it, but that can't be one of the 613 mitzvos. When the Gemara says there's 613 mitzvos, it means there are 613 commands explicit in the Torah that no one can disagree with. Now, obviously, there have been a lot of disagreement with those 613, but, but, but the, that's what the Ramam felt. Now, the Ram also, but other Rishonim disagree with that. Other, for, like many people know that the Ramban, you know, and other Rishonim argue with the Rambam and took out some of his mitzvahs and added other mitzvahs. So some of the mitzvahs they add in are, are mitzvahs that are not, um, uh, are not explicit in, in, in the Torah. Just to give one famous example, the Ram doesn't count the daily mitzvah of Zechiras Yetzias Mitzrayim as one of the 613 mitzvahs. Wow. And there's a question of why he, doesn't, why he doesn't do that. But one very possible reason is, is that it's not so easy to, even, though, even if we assume that it's derived from the Torah and it's a Torah command, which we do assume that, but it's not so easy to find a Pashup Shat Pasuk that requires that every day. Okay, we don't have the pasuk in front of us, but that's that, that's like an example. Whereas other Rishonim will count it as, as one of the six hundred thirteen mitzvos because they don't think you need a you know a simple pasuk to be included six hundred thirteen mitzvos. Similarly, the Ram writes that to be punished on a Torah level for someone to receive malchus lashes again when there's warning and witnesses and all those conditions is only on Torah prohibitions that are explicit in a pasuk, even if it is considered a Torah prohibition because it was learned out through the rules of Torah Pat, if it's not explicit in a Pasuk, you wouldn't be punished from the Torah. The Rambam says The Rambam, the Rambam says it. It's all the same opinion, meaning the 613 mitzvos, and I meaning he seems to have a little bit, two different levels, even in Doraisa law. I meaning there are the, the Doraisa laws that are explicit in the Pasuk, and then the ones that are implicit. And even though it's still considered Torah, because it's, it's implicit in the Torah, the rabbis didn't make it up, but it's somewhat lower, so therefore it can't be kind of one of those 613 mitzvahs, and you, it wouldn't be punishable on a Torah level. Okay. So, the reason why this is very important to the, for the Rambam is that this is what allows the Rambam to count the prohibition of eating Basar B'chalav as one of the 613 mitzvahs, because this is enough for him to be considered as explicit as in the Pasuk. Meaning, because it's not learned out from like an extra word or like something like that. Meaning, you, you, could, you could read it into the Pasuk, you could argue, but you could read it into the Pasuk, you know, without, you know, uh, a care right in theory could, could read the Pasuk that way. Meaning, you could, you could convince a non-Jewish person that that's what the Pasuk means. You I mean, you don't need to know the Yud Gimel Midos, Shatar Nidreshes Bahen, to, um, uh, to, uh, to learn out the prohibition to eat. So I mean, you could argue. Straightforward logic. Exactly, yeah. I mean, like, the Ram would say, listen, just like, just like you know, uh, when the Torah said granddaughter, it obviously meant daughter also. So that's how the Rambam read this passage. But again, he, he needs to read it that way because otherwise it wouldn't be one of the 613 mitzvahs and also otherwise it wouldn't be punishable. And I'm pretty sure there are Gemars that are explicit that you do get Malchus if you would eat Basar B'chalav. To double check that, but assuming that's true, that's a problem for the Rambam because you, that, you, need, you need a passage to point to 
for it to be punishable. So that's what Ram would say. It is an apostle. It's not, it's not like just the way Rashi says, oh, it's repeated twice, so it's coming to include a new idea. No, it's basically in the words of the Pasuk. Is the Pasuk the exact same all three times? Yes. <laughs> yes. Well, the, those five words, are yeah, are the exact same. Yes. The exact same. Yes. 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 Okay. So that is how the Rambam, how the Rambam reads it. Okay, let's, let's go a little bit more. Third paragraph in the Rambam. Ein asr mina Torah. It is not forbidden from the Torah. Ela basr behema tohora v'chal of behema tohora. This was mentioned. It's only if it is, tohora here means kosher. Kosher meats and um, kosher milk. Mean milk from a kosher animal. Shnemar lo sevashal gidi v'chal Okay. Ugedi, the word gedi, kid, who kolo vlada shor vlada sev vlada ace. That, in, that pashup shot means any animal. It just means a young animal, but it means any animal. Ad shiifra of yomar gedi izim, unless, as the Torah sometimes says, limits it and says gedi izim, which means the, the kid of uh, an ace is a, a goat, right? But Los Vashel Gidi Bichavimo doesn't say a, a, a young goat. It says Gidi, which all that means is a young animal. Velo Nemar Gidi Bichalivimo, and the only reason why I say Gidi in its mother's milk, Ela Shadiber Hakasav Behove. It was simply an example, and the Torah was simply taking what would be a common example. Now, at first glance, this sounds weird, because we, when we hear it, we think like the Torah must be being specific. Without Tarsh Pet, like only the kid in his mother's milk. But the Ram says that no, you could just as easily read that as just seeing a typical example. And, exam- and again, if you, if you imagine living on a farm, this would be a typical example. Meaning, imagine, let's say most people, you have like a few animals in your backyard. So what would you have? You would have a cow that you always kept, you know, year to year, you never killed. And it would produce milk for you. And it would also produce children. And every, occasionally, for a yuntiv, you would shecht one of the young animals. So it would just be very common, you know, if you wanted to make basar b'chalav, a common situation would be, you take the kid and the milk, which is from the same mother. Meaning you wouldn't have to go out of your way to do that. That would be just a common, a common uh, situation you find yourself. So that's how the Ram says, you, we read the the the, the Pat, at least is, read the Pasuk merely as an example. Okay. However... If it's not kosher milk, or not kosher meat, then it means it's not basar b'chalav. If you're using not kosher meat or not kosher milk, there's no problem. Mutter lavashel, you can cook it together. Umuteris bahanaya, and you can derive benefit from it. You just obviously can't eat it because you're cooking the milk and not kosher meat, so it's not kosher, right? But you can derive benefit and you can cook it. And you will not be liable for eating it for basar b'chalav, meaning obviously you're liable for eating not kosher, but you're not liable for basar b'chalav. Rabbi? Yes. Um, you say the Rambam uh, interprets the pasuk to include eating as a mitzvah. Prohibition Correct. Eating as a Correct. It does not include the prohibition against another. That's a very good point. We're gonna have to. We're, I'm, I'm not. Either we'll talk about that next time, or we will not talk about it. But very briefly, so we'll leave you with a. We'll leave you with a question. It's not as logical. The Rambam. The Rambam only counts Bishel and Achilas mitzvos. He does not. There's only two mitzvos now. But the prohibition to derive benefit seems to be according to the Rambam one of the lower level derisa. Remember, we already talked about there's like two different kinds of derises. The things that are explicit, and then things that are Torah law, but not explicit in the Torah. So Hana is like that, according to the Rambam. We have to talk, you have to... But you wouldn't that, be it, liable it, the same way. You would not, exactly, you would not be liable. According to the Rambam, you, you are high of Malchus if you eat Basar B'chalav, but not if you derive benefit from Basar B'chalav, even though both are prohibited on, prohibited on a Torah level. Again, I, we, I would need more time to like to flesh that out. That's correct. That's yeah. also correct. Okay, fine. I, I want to get to the, the bottom paragraph, though. The Ram writes, V'chein basar chaya v'of. Similarly, the meat of chaya, meaning not, non-domesticated animals, deer, okay, and poultry, chicken or turkey, 
Bain v'chalav chaya, whether you're cooking that with the milk of a wild animal, okay, non domesticated animal. Bain v'chalav behema, or behema here means a domesticated animal, or you're cooking with the milk of a domesticated animal, milk, milk, a cow milk. Eino aser b'achila min Torah is also not basar b'chalav min Torah. Meaning basar b'chalav min Torah is only for kosher domesticated animals, meaning cow, goat, sheep, and so forth. Chicken and milk is not derisa, which maybe some people know. And similarly, chayos, which would, I, I think the only chay we really eat is deer. I don't know if there's any other... Bison? I, Bison. I think, I think Bison that's... I'm not sure. I think that's... I'm not sure. Elk. Elk. Okay, so, so that and milk is not bas rechav derisa. This is a machlokus in the Mishnah. There is an opinion that says that it's all... Uh, so derisa, but we paskin is not. And we'll see there's major nafkaminas. We paskin only, again, domesticated animals of kosher, domesticated animals that are kosher are basar v'chal of daraisa. Well, don't we even say of isn't really basar? Daraisa? Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, yeah, it's not but Yeah, exactly, yes. Okay. Lefichach, therefore, now, we all know, though, you can't eat you can't, you, cannot, you're, you're, you, you can't eat chicken and milk, and you can't eat... I'm forget waiting. I'm not talking about waiting. I'm saying together. Cook together. But, it, I mean, basically, even though it's only Aser... Even though it's not Aser Daraisa, the Chum said, people get confused. Once you let them eat venison and milk, they're going to eat goat and milk once you let them eat... Right? So they, they made it all Aser Darabanan. So it is Aser Darabanan, right? Okay, newsflash. To, to eat chicken and milk mm-hmm. and any meat and milk. However, Lefichach... Mutter lavashla u mutter bahana. But it is permitted to cook and it is permitted to dry benefit. Meaning, whatever is basrachal, if it's only basrachal on a durabanan level, they only extended the prohibition to eat. They did not extend the prohibitions of benefit or cooking. Okay? And this does, this does come up. Let's just read the one more line of the Ram. Bachila, but it's forbidden to eat. Midivrei so from Durabanan. So people will make a mistake and then violate Basra Bachal on a Torah level. But, but that's a little inconsistent. I can understand how yeah. because that's a different category. But why not Bishop? That's a very good question. Very good question. I mean, why aren't we concerned that they'll make the same jump? Okay, I don't know. I, have a good, I don't know if it's such a good answer. We'll have to. I'll, I'll lean out. I'm sure it's discussed. I'll have to look it up. But yeah, it's a very good question. Because according to the Rambam, the Easter of Bishul is even more is right. Implicit right. It has the Easter of, of of Achila implicit in it. You're right. It's a, you're right. It's a better. It's even. It is a strong question. You're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. Okay, we'll have to work on that. Okay. Also, if you're cooking the two together, aren't you creating a problem with? Uh, Containers that you're cooking. Yeah. Okay. So you're you're you know you're 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 doing it. You're you know your non-Jewish neighbor asked you to come over and help, and you're friends with them. So uh, so you can help. You don't have to worry about uh, you know uh, stirring basar v'chalav. Yeah, you're right. Obviously, and you're not going to eat the food. You're not obviously because it's not kosher. But um, but there'd be no prohibition in terms of cooking. Now, no, yes. But they didn't go so far as to say cooking any living thing, because obviously it didn't apply to fish. Very good, it didn't apply to fish, right, so I guess we assume that people aren't going to make a jump, meaning everyone knows sort of fish is another there category. There are mammals that, that give milk, you know. But neither, ni- neither a chicken or... or that's, by the way, that's, that's, that's the, what the Gemara says. We who pass in that birds are not included in the Pasuk, so one line of the Gemara is the Gemara says, again, there's some who say it is, but, but we say it's not, and one proof is because... It says, "Don't cook a kid in his mother's milk." A chicken, the chicken's mother doesn't yeah. produce milk, so that's like too far from the pasuk. You can't read chicken in into the pasuk. That's what the Gemara says. Now, it's a machlokis in the Gemara. Also, Rabbi Yosef Glili held that chicken and milk, maybe some people know this, is not even aser mid Says that Rabbi Yosef Glili and his city would eat chicken and milk because yeah. he held it's not even aser mid But the majority was that that there isn't that um, uh, it is aser mid now, what about this? I'll ask you what you think. What about a, something which is from a kosher animal, but not 
Shachted. Cultured meat. No, no, let's not get there. That's 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 even more complicated. Slowly. Well, maybe, that's gonna, that's maybe, maybe thing yeah, maybe we'll get there. Maybe we'll get there. But just more simply, yeah. Unless you question. I think it's uh, I, so. When you're talking about this, it's making me wonder if it's someone who's involved with lactation, like, does any of this have to do with, you know, milks are pretty for the most part. They're not a hundred percent because we feed babies modified cow's milk, but if it's a milk that's would not nourish another species. Uh huh. Okay. And so, could there be an element of that and that of that and that? So, if it were like an animal that weren't checked properly, but it's the same species, to me that would make me think. Okay, I'm not sure. I, I don't think we make that distinction, but I hear, I hear. It would be forbidden all the way. Well, I'm trying to figure out. I'm just thinking about why would it be that these other things don't have the same. Yeah. Okay. I, well, I don't. I, I don't think we make that distinction, but I hear what you're saying. So, so. Um, and in which case, if the animals weren't checked it properly, but were the same species, it should be like a sore all the way across all of them. Right. I hear. I hear. So, I'll, I'll, so, so the bottom line is that not kosher meat. We don't have time to really explain what the machlok is about. Maybe we'll next time. I'm sorry, kosher meat that just wasn't checked properly. Right. Meaning, you just buy meat in a. You go buy. Meat in a in in um. Uh, I don't understand what that means. A kosher meat that wasn't. No, no, no. I, I'm sorry. So, 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 I mean, from a kosher animal. Oh. Meaning not a pig, not pig meat. Meaning right. meaning cow. Would be kosher. Yes, that's what I meant. I'm sorry if I wasn't clear. Right. Meaning you go into Trader Joe's and you just buy whatever the brand Trader Joe's meat. Okay. So it's you're right. It's it's from a kosher species. It's not kosher meat. It's not permitted to eat. So is what about that? Is if you would cook that with milk. Said earlier, no. Why? Well, one second. We didn't. We yeah, why? Why? I mean, that's what we said. It said it was if it's not kosher. Now, maybe if you interpret right, what we said before meaning not a kosher species. Yeah, that's that right. Would be right, that's the issue. That's the issue. No, but you could you could read it very. You could read it that way because especially the word tahora, where the word was tahora, baster behema tahora, bechal behema tahora. So tahora actually does have more of a context of the species. Right, so right. yeah, was it was it? So the bottom line is we don't have time to explain it. The bottom line is it's basically a machlokas, and this is what. And, and, and the Shulchan Aruch says, or the commentary of the Shulchan Aruch say, you should try not to really rely on that. Meaning, so what does that mean? So it, it really does come up with um, animal food, dog food, right? Because dog food, almost every dog food, or, or it's very common, has milk and meat in it. Now, the meat is not kosher in the sense that it was not shechted for sure, but it is meat from a kosher species, or, I don't know, often will be. You have to find, right, it might not be, right? So that, a person really should not, uh, and it's cooked together. It's, it's cooked. It's, it's, you know, uh, however it's, it's cooked together. So really a person should buy dog food, and apparently you can find it, that's either chicken, let me just again, say it again, clear, make sure it's clear. That might be, a, that might be Basrachal of Daraisa. But you could do one with chicken. Exactly, chicken. Chick- exactly. That's that's what that's basically what all rabbis say. You should g- get one that's chicken, and that's fine, or or I don't know if they make one with turkey, whatever. Exactly. So because because it might be basar of deraisa, and if it is, you can't feed that to your dog, or any animal, whatever it is. So exactly, you should buy one. You should buy one with uh, with chicken. I'll tell you another story that I read. It said that this is from one of our shechter's farm that someone came to the rav, and he was in the the United States Army. Okay, and he worked in the kitchen. Nice Jewish boy, you know. He, uh, you know, that's where he worked. And other than peeling potatoes, he had to cook. And he was instructed to cook turkey in butter. Okay, and he thought for sure he's not allowed to do that because he knows, like, you can't cook basar v'chalav. So he came to the rav. It's not going to be. There's not such a great punchline to this story, but this is what what it was told. So the person came to the rav basically sort of all upset and worried. And he was, what he was really coming for was the rub, for the Rav to write a whole long letter saying, this is so-and-so, he's an Orthodox Jew, and he's not allowed to cook Basar Mechalaf, and therefore... Yeah, he's trying to and the Rav said, no, it's fine, what's the problem? <laughs> <laughs> get back, get back with yeah. Right, exactly. Rabbi, according yeah. to the three reasons we gave at the beginning of the Shur about uh, gluttony, about cruelty, <laughs> and about Abdi Azara, okay. you think that cooking any kind of meat 
in, in milk would, would fill full. You're right, exactly. That's what I was saying. Exactly that point. You can't, you, you're right. You're right. You're right. We don't, you're right. The, the, no, no, none of these reasons are going to make sense in every detail. And either, either there's more than one reason. So, you know, you can't limit to one reason or there's some other reasons or we just don't know exactly, you know, uh, you know, why it's forbidden. But uh, you're, you're right. You're right. But again, like Robert said, you know, those are not the, I mean, those are just what we learn from. Exactly. That's what we assume. That's what we assume. We assume only that, that chicken and, again, in theory, chaya, venison is not minatora, and therefore you'd be allowed to cook it. And similarly, you'd be allowed to, um, uh, you'd be allowed, I'll tell you another, another, what, what yeah. Was, what was he not allowed? This was, he went out of the turkey. Right. I mean, turkey's, turkey's fine. Okay. Turkey's fine. If they would have asked him to, I don't know, cook a steak and butter, then possibly he would have needed a letter to say, you know, he's not allowed to do that. Hmm. How do we learn about chayas, Rabbi? Because we know that a chicken doesn't have... have uh, uh, we just assume a gedi can... can do nurse. You know? Yeah, but we assume gedi, gedi mean, the gedi is used for domesticated animals only. So when okay. the Torah says gedi, we assume it's limited to domesticated animals. Again, it is a machlok, it's a mishnah, that uh, other tanaim did feel like you. But Rui Kiva, which is how we paskin, says that, um, uh, says that, um, says that it's for, that, uh, that it's only domesticated animals. Do we have till nine? What do people think? Okay, good, fine. So, okay, so then let, let, me, let, me, let me explain a little bit what, because I want to tell you the story, but we first have to understand the halacha before, uh, to appreciate the story. So the issue of, again, meat from a kosher animal that is not shechted, the issue is as follows. Can we need a little background? There is a rule in the Gemara that ain't iser chal iser, which means what? If something is forbidden already for some reason, whatever reason, and then something else happens mm. that would be another reason for it to be forbidden. Uh, we ignore it. The Gemara is a source for this. And basically we say once something is forbidden, it's forbidden. It's kind of like out of the system and that's it. And it can't, additional reasons cannot start um, uh, adding to it to make it more forbidden, so to speak. Okay. However, there are exceptions. There are three exceptions. Either... Iser vasachas, meaning if something becomes forbidden for two reasons simultaneously at the same time. So then you can't choose one over the other, so it is, you would be liable for both prohibitions. In theory, if you'd be warned, you'd be punished twice and so forth. Another, pro, another uh, exception is iser kolel, when the second prohibition makes more things forbidden. I'll give you an example. The example in the Gemara is to eat a nevela, meaning not kosher food, on Yom Kippur. So did he violate one or two prohibitions? And it became an available before Yom Kippur. So the Gemara says that Yom Kippur is an Isser Kolo, meaning Yom Kippur makes all food in the world forbidden, not just this piece. Now it's obviously going to make the other food in the world forbidden, right? So we're not going to sort of like divide up the, the Isser Yom Kippur and say it applies to some food and not other food. So once it applies to all food, it will also apply to the Nevela, and you would be liable for eating food in Yom Kippur as well. Right, it's interesting. It's not, it's not intuitive. This, this, these rules are not so intuitive, meaning if you wouldn't say like that, you would say somehow you violated Nevela but not Yom Kippur, even though you ate on Yom Kippur, right? It, it's not intuitive, but that's the rule. And the, and the third exception is Isser Mosef. If the second prohibition on, let's say, one object is a more severe prohibition, it adds something to the, to the original prohibition. Okay, let me give an example. Example of that would be, let's say, um, uh, let's say you have something that's just not kosher, regular not kosher, pig, and then, um, uh, I don't know, then it's worshipped as a vodazara. It's offered to an avodazara. So now there are all these other things that are going to be forbidden, forbidden to derive benefit from it, it's now forbidden to... Um, uh, I don't know, off from the Mizbeach, if it wasn't yet. I don't know, other, all these other things become forbidden. So since a more severe prohibition now applies to the animal, to the piece of food, so there will be two reasons why it's forbidden to eat. Okay? Let me summarize for a second. If it had blood in it, that would be another reason, because you can't have the blood if it was drained properly. Okay, there could, right, there could be a lot of reasons. So the, so the point is, if the second prohibition is merely repetitive, doesn't add anything new, then it basically... 
you know, um, uh, it, it, we, we treat it as if it doesn't apply, it doesn't exist. But if the second prohibition is adding something, whether it's adding to applying more broadly to other things in the world or it's adding something to this object, then the second prohibition applies and then it's going to be also for two reasons. Okay. So the question is as follows. The Gemara says that, that the issue of, let's say, basar behema tahora, meat from a kosher species that's n- not shechted, lo shechuta, and then you cook that with milk. That is an issue of, of this idea of iser chal iser. Let, let's, let's think about it slowly. So the Gemara says, for sure, you can, it, it's forbidden to cook that. Okay? Because it, 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 it's for sure forbidden to cook. Okay? And we sort of view the cooking prohibition as a separate prohibition. It's for sure going to be forbidden to cook. No, depends on, no not for sure. It well, depends on how you interpret it. You're, you're right. You're right. You're right. But the, the, that's what the Gemara said. You're right. It, it, it would depend on it. But let, let's, let's make that All assumption. Right. Okay? Now let's think about eating. Okay? So it was already forbidden to eat right. that meat. Okay? Now there will be an additional reason to make it forbidden to eat. Bus, the, because it's Basar Vachalov, potentially, a potential another reason. And the cooking may also make it forbidden Asar Bahana now. So the Ram writes like this, amazingly. He has certain reasons why he's, why he's saying this to explain to Rangamars, but by the Ram writes. The Ram writes in the Pirish Mishnayos that the Isar Hana we view as an extension of the Isar Achila. Meaning, most Machal Asuros are only forbidden to eat. And there are a few, one of them is Basar Rechal, there are other ones also, that are additionally forbidden to derive benefit. One way to think about it is that eating is the primary way to benefit from something. It's forbidden to derive, to derive benefit through eating. And then Basar Rechal, plus any other, is any other Hana. That's the Ram writes. So Ram writes as follows. This is a Chiddush of the Rambam. The Ram writes that the Isar Hana of Basar Rechal of cannot apply independently of the Isra Achila. The Isra Hana is just an extension. It's just like a, a, an intensification of the Isra Achila. Maybe some of it has to do with the Isra Achila we view as sort of explicit in the Torah and the Isra Hana is not. It's sort of like an addendum in some way. So the Rambam writes, if you cook a nevela, meaning a kosher animal that just wasn't shechted with milk, it's not going to become Aser Ba'achila because it was already Aser Ba'achila. Again, let me, it's not going to become Aser Bachila due to the Basar Bachalov. Mm-hmm. It's not going to become forbidden because of Basar Bachalov to eat it. It was already forbidden to eat. And if it's not going to be forbidden to eat, then it won't become forbidden to derive benefit from. Because you can't say, oh, well, the Basar Bachalov, this Basar Bachalov is going to make it Aser Bahana, and therefore should make it also Aser Bachila. We don't view it that way. We always analyze the Achila before the Hana, because the Hana is just, is just uh, an outgrowth of the Isra Achila. But it's not that a makes sense. And that, exactly. That's exactly. He's using this at that point. And yeah, therefore, yeah. it's not as that, Right, thing. that's explicitly yeah. what the Ram is trying to argue. Huh. That's exactly, it's not like, a, that's exactly what the Ram is talking about. And therefore, the Ram says explicitly, if you cook a nevela, again, meaning meat from a kosher animal that wasn't shechted, with milk, you're not, you're not allowed to cook it. So then you can use dark food. Exactly, the Ram you could. According to the Ram you could. According to the Ram you could. But basically, this is like a chiddush of the Ram that it sounds like really a lot of Rishonim didn't really agree. Meaning, for, they, they basically said that no, we, we don't view it that way. You, you should look at the Isra not independently. And once it's Aster Bahana, it's going to be Aster Bahachila. And for the dog food, it doesn't even need to be Aster Bahachila. I mean, once it's Aster Bahana. Exactly. So that is the Machalok, is that that's what it revolves around. So the note of Yehuda has a tshuva and it's quoted by the Shulchan Aruch, which basically says this seems to be a real Machalokas. And it, and 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 presume and it's a machlokus really on a derisa possibility. I Meaning, according to the Rishonim, would say it's forbidden. It would be forbidden even on a Torah level. So you shouldn't really rely on the Rambam. But if there's a need, you can rely on the Rambam. That's what Nodi Behuda says. So I remember this came up one time. This is what it was, you know, like heard in the base medrash when I was learning YU that the following question came up: that there was a young man who was in smicha and he was. He was um, uh, an NCSY madrich, meaning working with, you know, students in public schools that are not in Orthodox homes at all. So he was learning with them just like basic mitzvot, samsukim. So one time they're learning about Basar B'chalav. So they're, they're learning like the very first five minutes of this year. 
that it's not it's usher to, to cook and usher to eat and usher to write benefit. And the boy said, he said he'd never heard of this, and he worked at McDonald's. He had a job after school working at McDonald's. Mm -hmm. So he said, like, am I allowed to do that? So honestly, the, probably the, then his wife didn't really, he wasn't really sure either. So, so he asked Rav Schachter, so first of all, the question is, is this considered deriving benefit from it? And basically the answer is yes, meaning working with something which is Aster Bahana, and through working with that, you get paid. We can, you, you could have argued that's too indirect, but it's basically explicit in the Shulchan Aruch that says that's considered deriving benefit from. Something that's, that's Aster Bahana, you, you can't, uh, meaning even though he's not the owner and he's not getting the money that it's for, but he's being paid a salary to deal with that, that's considered benefiting from it. Okay, let's take that as an exception. But Rav Shachter basically said, I'm not sure if he told him to tell it, he said basically that's, the note of Yudah says, you can rely on the Rama if there's a need. So he felt that this boy, if you would tell him, you would have to stop working, it would, you know, um, uh, be too hard for him. So he told him that he should, you, I think he, uh, no, Marie, I think he told the NCS manager you should tell him that for now it's fine, but you should, you know, Try to find another job, but if you need to work there, then, you know, for the time being, it's fine. But you should, you know, uh, encourage him to... Uh, to uh, so, so people who go to these uh, soup kitchens and, you know, and help out there, I mean, they, they don't... Oh, so the question is, do they get any hana from that? Yeah, no, no. But if you're asked to cook in the soup kitchen, that's... If, if it's, again, if it's really milk and meat. You pay for it, though. No, but it's just cooking. You're not allowed to... You're not allowed to you you get, you you get, no, but it's, it's, it's probably not that common that you're cooking really milk and meat, but I don't know. I mean, well, people cook the bacon. People feel, people feel if it's in butter, good. well, no, that's bacon would be fine. If it's, if it's, if it's, Rabbi, the answer at McDonald's is not that he's getting hanats, that he's cooking with the meat. Well, that, that, that's a good question. Like, I think he, I remember the case was he wasn't cooking it. I don't remember what, I don't, he was just like, you know, well, selling no, it. I was going to ask you a different question. If your job is to work at McDonald's and you could be a, assigned to 10 different duties, only one of which is making the cheeseburgers. You're right. So you you can't work there because the uh, the establishment cooks Yeah, I mean, that's, cooks if you're, well, to, it, I'm not sure. It depends what you're doing. You meaning, must have been cooking it. Meaning, I'm not sure. He's cleaning he, the floors. He has to be... It could be some jobs are okay. I'll tell you, because in the case in the Shulchan Aruch, it's not Basar Bechal, but it says, let's say you were hired to transport something which is Aser Behana. And you're going to be paid to move Aser, something which is Aser Behana. Right, so, so benefiting by right, so there, right, so the Gemara says that, or the Shulchan Aruch says that's considered benefiting, meaning, and, and things for which it's Aser Behana, there aren't so many things, that would be Aser. So you're right, meaning if he was only, it could be if he was only like cleaning the tables, it wouldn't be a problem, but I guess he was, but there will be more jobs. I mean, if his job is, I don't know, to serve it, then it would probably be a problem. I don't know if they probably don't serve it and, you know. Just working at the cash register in, in Maybe, I don't know. You're right. You have to, you have to, again, I don't, I, I didn't speak to any of these people directly. This was like, you know, like the exciting thing in the base matters that week, you know, that like, <laughs> did he hear what Shaka said about the boy? And he for sure could not cook it. Yeah, that for sure. But we're just saying even beyond that, yeah. there are some jobs that would be, that would be oh, problematic. Yeah. Some, of the whole base the field some, of the some of the people he's serving might be Jewish. <laughs> That's another problem. Okay, that he wasn't yeah. asking. He wasn't, ask, he wasn't asking about that. Okay, excellent. Okay, we will continue next week. If anyone, I have a somewhat idea of the, what I want to cover, but if people, you know, within this world of us of Achal have you know, things we should talk about, uh, definitely suggest it. I think it'd be interesting now for next week's election. Wait. Mm -hmm. but, uh, so I've just read an article about oh, cultured meat. Israel's one of the leading. Um, I have to do research. I've seen, I've seen articles about it. Cultured meat. are going to be. cultured meat? It's, uh, it's not meat. For, I mean, it's not meat from animals. It takes the cells from animals and they grow meat and chicken oh. in the lab. And oh. so there, I read an article that was saying that it's probably not going to be an issue of Basar Bakal, but to think about that, and, and I don't know. But it's, it's,